okay so i kind of had this whole other video in mind and then i just like completely lost my shit off camera so we're not doing that idea anymore we're doing something completely different because i am physically incapable of doing anything else right now if you haven't been keeping up with my podcast you may or may not know that anxiety is literally kicking my ass i mean like what did i do to her because <laughs> i don't know where this is coming from i mean literally curb stomping me snatching my edges like it's bad it's really bad and i don't think anybody outside of aj and my therapist know how bad it is i don't even know if, if aj knows how bad it can be sometimes but I mean, it's just exhausting, you know? It's really exhausting, but you have to keep chugging. You have to keep going through life, right? And what I don't want to do is skip another video because of it. So if I have to do a video with puffy eyes, red eyes, snot coming out of my nose, then I'm going to do that because I'm so tired of this. And I think that I'm just tired of, you know anxiety getting in the way of things that i actually like to do so today we're fighting back and i figured what we could do is i could show you realistically what i do when anxiety is this bad how do i keep going through my day because the day doesn't always stop there are days where i'm fortunate enough to where i could just be like you know what today's canceled but today today is not canceled like things have to get done and i want to see you guys and i think we're close enough now to where i can do that like this so i'm gonna show you my little morning routine for when anxiety is just really anxiety you know when it's really really bad i recently went on a trip i did not vlog it because it was intentionally it was supposed to be for my mental health it was supposed to be for me to have a fucking second so i went to a wellness resort and what was cool about this resort is they actually offered different classes most of the classes i couldn't get into because i naturally procrastinated and signed up really late but i was able to get into a couple and one of them was a breathwork class it was like an introduction to breathwork which i have never really dabbled in basically it changed my life like, I'm not even kidding. It changed my life. I learned all these different breathing techniques and I've been doing them since the trip. So if you have panic attacks and you have anxiety attacks, I cannot recommend enough to check out Breathwork. I've been using this app called Breathe. I'm going to do a quick little Breathwork session. They have like all sorts of times you can choose, like four minutes, 30 minutes. Like there's so many different ones, but I'm going to do one and kind of let you listen in on the guided part of it so you can see what it's like i'll give you some recommendations but i want to show you guys how this whole breathwork thing works because it's actually really life-changing if you have anxiety or deal with panic attacks so it's an app called breathe i'll put all these details down below but basically you choose like the category there's for sleep anxiety like obviously anxiety hello so then it's gonna bring you all these options to relieve stress. So I could do a meditation or there's a section for breathing exercises. So let's go find a comfy spot and do this really quick. Okay, so I literally found one that is called emergency breath. And I think we're in enough of an emergency to use this one. It's four minutes long, you guys. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're like, fuck, I need to take a breather. You could literally go in your car and do something like this. You could go in a bathroom stall. Like I literally know all the hiding places because like I do this all the time and nobody finds out that I'm having a panic attack. It's great. So what I'm saying is you can always kind of find a way to break away and do this. Once you get kind of familiar with it, you don't even need like an app to guide you. You can kind of just do it and use a timer or something like that but yeah so i'm gonna get comfy and look who's joining us not today mister <laughs> okay i'm gonna turn it up so you guys can hear it welcome to the emergency breath 
This is your go-to meditation when you find yourself getting really frustrated, agitated, or angry. It's also a great one to teach young kids to do when they get angry. Start by taking a few deep breaths. In through the nose, all the way into your belly, and releasing it out through your mouth. Hold for a count of four. And as you exhale, feeling the anger release with your breath. Okay, so four minutes. Four minutes, that's all it takes. And you're able to just like recenter yourself, kind of go inward. And so the way that my breathwork instructor kind of explained this, which really just clicked for me, is that breathwork essentially is like resetting your nervous system. So like oftentimes when we're stressed out, we forget to literally inhale. We hold our breath and there's not oxygen getting to your brain. Therefore, you're not able to regulate yourself. Your body is sensing danger and stress that may or may not be there. And so breath work can essentially reset you and taking a few deep breaths at least what i found for me is taking like a few deep breaths with like an audible sigh like doing that like six times right inhale really slowly and then exhale with an ah like do that six times it's like hitting the reset button in my brain and i'm like how have i never heard of this until i went to this wellness retreat and did it in this class and i'm like whoa like i literally went to the class like so anxious because i was just like i don't know what these people are going to tell me you know it's a wellness retreat so i was a little skeptical like i don't know why they're going to make me drink like the blood of a frog or something you know how these retreats can be sometimes i was like i'm not i'm not here for that but it was just as simple as like wow breathing something that i've been doing and i and i have to say like i feel bad saying this but like I thought breath work was such a joke. I'm like, I'm breathing all the time, bitch. What the fuck are you talking about? But it's so different when you're intentional with it. And like a small detail, like closing your eyes while you do that, especially if you deal with anxiety, can be really, really helpful in your breathing exercises. Because another thing that I learned is panic attacks and anxiety attacks are usually triggered by overstimulation of like whatever's happening externally for you. So maybe that's like a lot of noise, a lot of people, a lot of people have social anxiety. So in those moments, what you would wanna do is find a way to like go inward and close your eyes. And it's crazy that that small change like really does help. So anyways, that's what's been helpful for me. I just wanted to share that with you. This app Breathe also has like meditations and stuff, but I will say like I get meditations from like anywhere. Like I will go on YouTube and just be like, depending on how much time I have, like 30 minute meditation or whatever. But I think like the coolest thing about going and learning about breath work was being in the class with other people who also shared their experience. Like we all were dealing with the same thing. You know, and so I think that in itself just like brought me a lot of peace being like, wow, you know, it's not just me dealing with this because I think part of anxiety is just being anxious that other people will know you're anxious. So you're literally having anxiety about anxiety. And so I think like the more open and honest I can be about it and the more I can just like tell people like, yo, I'm like, I'm like anxious as fuck right now. It actually is like a huge step in me calming down. So like AJ is usually with me when we do like events or stuff like that. And I mean, I love him coming regardless, but I think his attendance in these events is actually really crucial because he's like my go-to person to be like, hey, like I'm not doing well. Um, and he just kind of like knows how to help me through those situations. So I would also say if you deal with anxiety to the extremes or whatever your level is and you think that you are a bit unstable in public like if you can just have like a person or even just like mention it to someone you feel comfortable with in the room it does a lot just being honest like if you're at a dinner being like yeah like i'm a little anxious right now like you know i'm gonna go get some water like just tell them and, and usually it's like not as big of a deal as we make it but i think it's so much easier to almost like force yourself into a panic attack because you're so you're trying so hard to like suppress the anxiety and hide it but like you are literally fighting yourself when you do that and so the way that i think about it is like you know the saying that's like 
If you tell yourself not to think of an elephant, you're gonna think of what? An elephant. Same thing with anxiety. If you're telling yourself like, don't have a panic attack, don't have a panic attack, you're literally cueing yourself up and you're stressing yourself out and you are literally getting yourself in that mode to like go there. And I do this all the time to myself, especially when I feel like I don't have that like safety net in the room or like a friend or a person that I can be like, hey, a little anxious. So of course that's not always a luxury, but in the cases that it is, like please tell someone just so like they can keep an eye out for you and make sure you're doing well, but it makes a huge difference. On a completely separate note, I wanted to show you something that I bought recently. If you follow my TikTok, you may have already seen this, but Hello, I have a flip phone and I'm absolutely being fucking for real. <laughs> I'm so for real. People stay blowing my line. Like I swear, flip phone ringtones just go hard. Tell me that's not a bop. <laughs> That's about no. So why did I get a flip phone? I got a flip phone because my iPhone overwhelms me like just looking at it It's for me. It's associated with work. It's associated with just an influx of People that have access to me and this isn't a bad thing you guys. It's just I don't think we understand like the mental side effects of being online having a community of people that can access you whenever so like with that it's important that you create the boundaries whether you're a content creator or not i think this could apply to anyone in terms of just like having and setting boundaries with your phone like so many people have anxiety so many people are just like not doing well and i don't know if this is like normal but i just feel like among my peers i, I don't recall a time when we were all like just suffering to this degree and i think a lot of it has to do with i mean the state of the world is shit too but like we have access to the internet and it's doing something it's doing a number on our brain and we're never gonna understand that probably but we are the guinea pigs we are literally the guinea pigs for social media do you know how scary that is <laughs> like that's that's not good so i think it's just important to take preventative steps to protecting yourself and realizing if something is not working for you. So basically this is my before and after work phone. So the way that I think about it is like, you know, some people go to work and it's their nine to five. They leave that building and hopefully more than likely they don't take it home with them, but they're able to have that hard cutoff. Um, obviously not everybody does that but you should but when you are a content creator that shit is next to you all the time you literally some people like sleep next to their phone you know like your office is always there and so it just wasn't healthy for me to have my phone but like i said i just don't think this is like exclusively a problem for people who have online jobs i think this is a problem that is it's affecting more people than just influencers and content creators and i think we all know we can get stuck in the doom scroll and just like having our phone more than we need to like i don't even like having it near me when i'm at a restaurant and stuff like that you know what i mean like i just i think having a smartphone and access to the internet has inhibited my ability to be present and in not being present i have to be somewhere if i'm not present right so i'm either stuck in the future with anxiety worrying about things or stuck in the past which could lead to like depression and so where i want to be is in the present moment and enjoying myself and if that means that i have to literally cut myself off from the internet then i guess that's what i have to do because you know being the kind of like worker that i am i'm always wanting to like be online and engage with my community and and make content but at what cost you know so we're kind of we're backpedaling a bit um all the way back to like 2006 to be specific and so far i love it like i'm able to basically have communication with my family and friends and then not be like 
hi, are you dead? Because that was a big issue. Everyone was getting mad at me because I don't answer my phone. Yeah, but now just like call me on my flip phone, you know? <laughs> and the stares that I have gotten, you guys, I love it. I hope you all get a flip phone because we're gonna make it cool. And I really think like, our generation needs a cool version of this. Like, this is not cute, this is not sexy. I would love like a razor phone, but I couldn't find one. Anyways, the flip phone girly. So now that you know about the flip phone, basically I just like have office hours, you know? So this phone is used from the hours of like nine to five, essentially. But moving on to some other things. Um, if I have really bad anxiety, what I eat is very, important actually more so what to avoid is more important so i stay away from alcohol anxiety is a thing and if you don't need to do that to yourself guys like just don't i do like caffeine right i love a good matcha and i have like my matcha glass here but here's the thing caffeine and anxiety do you do you know about that? Do you know about that? Are you new here? Not fun, not fun. So if I wanna have my matcha, which I do because it does bring me, it's like a little hit of dopamine and you know, I could use that too. However, at what cost? So if I know that I'm like going to an event or I'm gonna have to like go somewhere and be in public by myself or whatever, I'm gonna skip this, okay? We're just gonna like have some water or you know, an Olipop. I don't know, something else because what I found is that I get like wired and anxious and that is like, I don't know. I don't know what it feels like to like inhale drugs through your nose, but I would assume it's similar to that. So skip the caffeine and definitely focus on eating something a little cleaner. So what's been helping me as of lately is, um, oh, that's, an, that's not a cute light, but go with it. What's been helping me is going to Central Market. Have you guys been to Central Market? It's heaven on earth. I know you guys like Trader Joe's, but go to Central Market. They have an entire section of fresh bread. Anyways, they have like the cutest prepped salads. Look at this. It's like salmon poke salad. And it comes with a little dressing. A little Greek salad. Like it's so nice and honestly, prepped stuff like this is just really helpful for me because it's one less thing that I have to think about, you know? And whatever it takes to just make life a little easier on days where you're overwhelmed, do what you gotta do. But I don't wanna be going through a drive-through because I think that the cycle of being overwhelmed, going to get greasy fried food, putting more stress on your body and digestive system because you're not eating like nutritionally dense food, it kind of keeps you in the cycle of like not giving your body what it needs, especially in these moments of stress. So like my body is telling me like it needs some extra leaven so whole foods you know keeping a lot of veggies in the rotation is is what works for me and usually eating like this for a few days or more often than not is where I feel like I start to see a bit of a difference in my mood altogether like you are what you eat you know what I'm saying I think I'm gonna have this one today feeling like a Greek salad is the move Okay, but before we eat, I think I do want to show you guys another thing that helps me on my anxious days. So here's the thing. When anxiety happens on a work day, you know, it's not as easy to just like tap out, right? If it happens on the weekend and I don't really have plans, like, you know, that works out a little bit better because I don't have like an agenda or a schedule typically or one that I actually have to stick by. Today being a work day though, we have to keep moving. So... What have we done today? Let's recap really quick. We have regulated, worked on resetting the nervous system, okay? We have talked about how to create boundaries with technology so that we're not unintentionally, unnecessarily overstimulating ourselves with other stuff, okay? So if you need to turn off your phone, do that. Do what you need to do. And we have talked about what to feed yourself with. Now let's talk about, okay, we've done all these things. We kind of feel grounded again. So now let's focus on how we're gonna get back into the agenda for the day without overwhelming ourselves again. So I do have to say like, I feel so much better. I'm sure you can see it in my face from when you first clicked into this video where I was looking very disheveled. I feel much more grounded and like I can breathe a little bit. 
I have a piece of paper here, but you could do this in your phone. You can do this like however you want. This is my to-do list. The reason that I like to write it out is because it's like something tangible that I can go to to scratch off, whether that's in a notes app or the, the Google agenda app, like whatever you wanna use, just have a way that you can like scratch it off therefore making yourself feel more accomplished because at least from the anxiety that i experience a lot of it is like oh my god i have too much to do and i'm never gonna get it done right so here's how you're gonna make your to-do list though so that you don't freak the fuck out again the first one to three items on your list okay depending on how you're feeling if you're like really still not doing well i want you to do three if you're doing okay do one and you're gonna do something easy so you're either gonna put three really easy tasks that you can do to start your day or you're gonna do one okay so i'm gonna do one easy task for me that is just making my bed so i'm gonna put make bed okay and then after that's like the easiest possible thing i can do today for someone else that might be go drink a glass of water that might be go put shoes on that might be go put like go get dressed whatever your easy is put that at the top of your list and preferably choose something that you enjoy i've talked about this in previous videos what we're gonna do with this to-do list is build momentum to get going and work through this anxiety we're not going to let this anxiety debilitate us and stop us from having a day and completing our task okay so i put make bed and then something that would be on like an intermediate level that's a little harder but still kind of chill for me is going through my emails okay so i'm going to put emails after that because emails are kind of easy because I can do that in my bed if I want. I can like get comfy. I can do that in sweats. I don't have to like look any kind of way to do my emails, you know? And then after emails, something a little more advanced would be making a TikTok video that I need to do. So I'm gonna do a sponsored TikTok, okay? And then immediately after the hard thing, I'm gonna put something really, really easy again. And that's just gonna be drink an olipop okay so like you're brainwashing yourself with this and keep going for however long you need to do your list like get all of your hard things done but like what i'm saying is interweave it with really easy things so that you're not feeling like at a constant state of stress because that is going to kickstart you into that anxious mode and from there what we don't want is to go back into a panic episode so this is just what i found that worked for me it's like i'm like tricking myself and i'm doing really really easy things and also like drinking an olipop for me is kind of like a reward so i'm kind of sneaking in ways of like congratulating myself on doing something hard do you feel me and then when you do these things go and like mark it off with the biggest attitude like it feels really good just trust me okay so today took a bit of a turn but you know i'm all about keeping it real over here like feeling crappy and overwhelmed or not we we are gonna do the content the content is getting done and i know when to take a break but you know today i just felt like man i would rather talk about this than not because i know how helpful that's been for me to like share how debilitating anxiety can feel and be um and if you deal with this please know that you're not alone i would really love to just hear from you guys about how you're coping with anxiety obviously like you, you guys know i'm in therapy too but you know my therapist can't like be here to hold my hand all the time but i would love to know like what works for you so please comment that down below and i don't know thanks for thanks for just letting me like go there with you today i am very sensitive today i'm also a water sign so don't hold this against me please i literally hate crying on camera i hate people knowing that i've cried so please be nice but anyways don't forget to subscribe like this video and i'll see you next week mm -hmm.